not intercept. Yeah, I think that the, the whole hibernation thing is bullshit. It's not going to happen. If we can't achieve hibernation pods, how do you think we will travel in space? Well, we don't. <laughs> People are, th you know, thinking this stuff is going to happen. It's like it's not going to happen in our lifetimes. It's not going to happen in our kids' lifetimes. Um, sorry, it's just like. Uh, uh, Maybe there'll months, be some propulsive thing, but like, you, you, you know how so much food and shit you have to take to get to Jupiter? Food and water uh, and everything, uh, like uh, how much stuff river, you have to right produce to, to keep uh, humans alive just to get to, you know, the moons of Jupiter or something like that, let alone to, like, don't even, like, get into another star is fantasy land. Absolute fantasy land. It's not going to happen. So it doesn't mean you shouldn't be investigating, you know, small, the, the, the series of those small actual propulsive technologies that can, you those know, get us to, you know, quarter of the speed of light or something. The rolling Fine, but, you know. It's basically providing stability to the flight. But the problem is, the energy required, right? People don't realize this. Okay, well, well, why don't you just fly faster to Mars? The problem is, the faster you fly there, uh, not only the more energy you use to get there, you have to use the same amount of fuel to slow down than you did getting there. So, like, you can't just haul us. It's why the uh, Pluto, uh, the New Horizons Pluto probe, couldn't slow down and orbit couldn't orbit Pluto because it didn't have the, it used up all its fuel getting there, right? It could not, it was going so fast it could not slow down. It requires the same amount of energy to slow down as it did to accelerate to get there in the first place. You can't just fly somewhere super quick, like you can't just accelerate using some ion drive and, and then, you know, and then think you can slow down using that same ion drive. It's like, you no, know, you know, it's not that easy. The acceleration would kill you. I don't know, but it needs a lot of shit ton of energy. Yes, the radiation. Everyone keeps talking. Oh, we'll just live on the moons of Jupiter. Like, yeah, go. See how long you last. Unbelievable. Uh, yes, the radiation would kill you. Actually designed, like within uh, hours, apparently. Like it would, simple, like you'd be uh, dead. Designed, but... It's it's the same thing, and I've done a dedicated video on this on this second channel, so this uh, pulled from my last live stream about why that we're right, not going to have a self-sustaining Mars, Mars colony. We're not going to have it in 20 years. We're not going to have it in 50. We're not going to have it in 100. We're probably not even going to have it in 500 years because it's practically guaranteed. You cannot. People think, oh, let's have a self-sustaining Sustaining colony on Mars because we need it just in case we kill ourselves here. If we kill ourselves here, the the colony on Mars is dead. They will not survive. They do not have the resources on Mars to do not have the infrastructure required to even make all the basic stuff to keep the colony sustained. It's just people just don't realize the massive production and logistics infrastructure we have on this planet to manufacture just the basic stuff like the shirts I'm wearing um, and with them to manufacture the chips. They you know, make everything run to manufacture, you know, you can, yes, you can manufacture your raw materials and you can make, you know, shelters and huts and things like that. But to keep all your electronics going, to keep everything else going, you can't manufacture that stuff there. You need such massive infrastructure and logistics and people to do it. It's just you could not feed the amount of people, even if you had a thousand giant domes with, you know, a million people, you, pro you probably still couldn't do it. It's not going to happen. A self-sustaining colony on Mars is going to die. It's not going to happen in 500 years. We'd, we'd have to terraform the planet for it to happen. And and it'd have to. It'd take hundreds of years to get to that point before you even had the resemblance of the infrastructure required on Mars. That's required to even manufacture and produce basic stuff when all the when all the uh, stuff wears out, when all the electronics and all the chips die and everything's you know, and not to mention all the other stuff required. It's just ridiculous. Oh, just take along a 3D printer. We'll 3D print everything. Ah, piss off. <laughs> Unbelievable. People think it's a fantasy land. Living in fantasy land if you think there's going to be a self-sustaining Mars colony. My kids won't be alive to see a self-sustaining Mars colony. Their kids. My kids' kids. Kids. Kids won't be alive. 
because to see a Mars a self-sustaining so Mars colony. Yes, living on Mars would be horrible. Things about doing a mission, you're <laughs> if you go die. there, you're probably going to die there. You know, you can imagine planning and, and, and live in miserable conditions. There's the nothing Earth, to do there. I said this in the other video as well. Um, going to the moon. It's like set up a colony on the moon. We can get there in a couple of days. Tourists will pay. Uh, yeah, all <laughs> tourists will pay top dollar to go to the moon for a week. You can go to the moon for a week, a couple of weeks. You can have a holiday there. Come back once in a lifetime opportunity. It'll be the ultimate bucket list. Mars. Nobody wants to be in a freaking tin can for nine months with nothing to see, nothing to do, and then get to Mars with you know once the novelty wears off after a couple of days or a week, that's it. And you've got to hang around for another year or something before the next bloody window, and then spend nine months coming back. No one's going to want to do it. It's ridiculous. Elon is wrong. Elon is wrong. You cannot have a self-sustaining Mars colony. It's not going to like as in like the backup i'm talking about the backup thing have a colony on mars that is something earth blew up or did whatever we, we destroyed ourselves we're all dead and the mars colony will eventually die out it will not be self-sustaining they can't do it and they're not going to be able to do it for hundreds of years i can guarantee you yeah living anywhere that doesn't have breathable atmosphere and pressure is just it's just Come on, <laughs> try and do it. Try and go, try and set up a self-sustaining colony in the Antarctic. Try and do that. Good luck, right? And you've got oxygen there and you've got pressure. <laughs> it's just cold, right? Same temperatures on Mars, basically. Well, it can get warmer on Mars, get up to 20 degrees on Mars on a good day, you know? Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's just, yeah, you, you need the total recall thing. You need the uh, terraform. We've done nothing to Earth's atmosphere. We've done nothing. The Earth doesn't even give a shit what we do to it. It's only us poor, pathetic, uh, fragile humans with our fragile um, ecosystems that uh, our fragile, you know, the way we live. And you know, the planet doesn't care if the if all the poles melt and the water rises, you know, 100 meters. The planet doesn't give a shit. <laughs> Think positive. I'm thinking like an engineer. Solar energy Mars is not the kind of place to raise your kids. You betcha. So NASA I won't even have Netflix. <laughs> then how would we become an interplanetary so, so species? Well, you've got to terraform I, the planet. You can't just <laughs> live in... If you're going to live in spheres, you may as well have just live in space. You may as well live in gigantic, those big, you know, huge kilometer wide, you know, rotating artificial gravity space things like you might as well live there like you know it's like <laughs> look i'm not saying it's eventually going to happen we'll eventually colonize mars right but people who think that we can just sustain have a self-sustaining colony and do it with like this century is is delusional absolutely freaking delusional they don't know about the logistics uh, of is the everything radio, around them. Just look system. at everything now, you're wearing, everything uh, around you, all the technology, all the stuff, and then imagine the that uh, and having all that stuff and then having all the stuff that requires to keep you alive on a daily basis because there's no, because Mars isn't habitable, right? So, yes, you need the oxygen, you need the water, you need everything else, right? And uh, it's just, uh, it's ridiculous. Uh, yeah, so the way it does happen um is is it takes 500 years right it takes 500 years of building up hundreds and hundreds of years of building up massive colonies on mars and and then building up slowly building up at least the resemblance of the infrastructure required minimum infrastructure required to become self-sustaining, we're talking hundreds of years, not 50 years, not this century. It's bullshit. Hundreds of years, absolute minimum. Yeah, on Earth we still rely heavily on things that can take billions of years to create, oil, food chain, ecosystems, etc. Oh yeah, just uh, making plastics, for example. You, you, you need oil to make plastics, you know, it's like... 
in the two yeah. Viking spacecraft. It's been 50 years since we were last on the moon. Live on Mars? What a joke. So this technology's been around a long time. <laughs> oh, no, you can live there. Well, no, live. You can survive there. You can survive on Mars, assuming nothing goes wrong. Um, you can survive there, but you're not going to have a self-sustaining colony. So... Everything right, will still have to be like I'm talking long term survival. Like, you know, we could set up a colony on Mars, right, in the next 20 years. And people could live there, and we can, you could send enough stuff there, and enough spares, and enough everything, and assuming that you can feed yourself, you know, assuming you can get, say, a thousand people there. And you can, assuming you, you can build the infrastructure to feed a thousand people and sustain the lives of, you know, thousands of people assuming you can build that infrastructure if earth suddenly blew up then how long would that colony last how long would it last before everything starts to break down the spares are no good you know you might be able to last 20 years 50 years like it'll eventually die out because you just you know it's not like you can just wander outside and you know and start you know I, it's just that just, means that no. The video no, video no, 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 no. Yeah, a moon vacation. There's totally... I, I, the future to, uh, is tourism, moon moon tourism. Yeah, I guarantee you. One of our Once the first person, the once one person we comes back from the moon sure with a selfie of them like you know holding up like or putting their thumb and covering the earth or holding up the earth like this you know it'll be a tiny dot you've got to get the left you've got to you know it's really difficult to get the angles and the scale right but anyway you know like doing the atlas holding up the earth or you know it'll be the leaning tower of pisa thing with the you know with the earth once people start posting that then all the rich bastards will go shit i'm going to spend or even you know moderately wealthy people will go i'm going to spend my life savings i'm going to the damn moon and you know and that's my two weeks you know go for a couple of week trip and I guarantee so you, people will start flocking, man. Guarantee it. It's going to happen. Yeah, if you have an accident on the moon, oh, on the Mars colony, you're gone. You know, it's like, yep, it'll, the moon trips will start with, uh, you can go to the moon, orbit around, and then come back. Um, it'll start with that, and then they'll be landings. And, um, yeah, I so want to see um, um, the movie Artemis from the book, from the Andy Weir book. Do I have any objections to rare earth, rare earth <laughs> material mining on celestial body, moons, asteroids, etc.? I've heard that to be a likely reason to return to the moon as well. Um, no, I have no problem with mining the shit out of the moon. The moon's just an ancient rock that's just been floating in space. Let's mine the hell out of it. Can't can't do any damage to it. Even even Mars, like like as I was, we could be there for a thousand years and we'd still be like a speck on the surface. It's like I don't. Uh, I don't know. I I've got no problem at all with um, mining moons and asteroids. I I think yeah, hell yeah, go to the moon, mine the shit out of it, make it economical, then set up tourist tourist bases there, set up science bases. You can do some great science from the backside of the moon, for example. Um, yeah, absolutely. Go there, mine the shit out of it. Yes, much more appealing for the rescue side of things. Dude, Seggy, you wouldn't go to the moon, really? Anyone who would want to go to Mars instead of the moon is crazy. The, uh, Mars. What happens with Mars? You shoot off to Mars. You never see the Earth, right? You never, like, you can't look back, right? You can't be looking back out the window. <laughs> Maybe they could somehow do. Anyway, like... Like you'd like, and then you'd only see the moon for a couple of days. You'd be gone ski, right? And then it just gets smaller and smaller, and nothing. Then you've got nothing for nine months, and then you land on Mars, and it's probably a novelty for a week, and then you're just sitting there like, oh shit, what do we do? There's nothing to see, nothing to do, and uh, no, 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 <laughs> and you're stuck there for like six or nine months or whatever a year, and then you've got nine months to come back in in the nothingness of space, cooked up with. You know, a bunch of other tourists. No, nah, it's not going to happen. Not going to happen. Whereas, whereas um, the moon is like a couple of days trip each way. It, it's it's nothing. <laughs> it's like people, it's, trust me, once it's safe enough, people will flock. They'll spend their life savings to go to the moon. And you go to the moon, you can bounce around. Absolutely fantastic. And you can see the earth. You're standing there. 
bouncing around, well, having fun. There's the earth. Put your thumb up. Uh, cover it like this. You know, take your selfie. Fantastic. Like, brilliant. Absolutely. Visit all the, visit all the, uh, you know, the relics or whatever if you can do that. Um, and they're so spread apart. I, you know, you can't. But, um, yeah, I, like, no. No, and the so moon. To to <laughs> Only an idiot would want to subject themselves to go into Mars <laughs> for a trip. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Dave, what activity would you think would attract aliens most if they were able to even detect us? <laughs> you know, well, it's got to be nuclear, doesn't it? Or it's got to be. Um, no, well, once you work, once you work, transmit, work, that's the uh, that's the sign of intelligence. So surely, the there was an alien species listening, and they heard us. We, we, we um, not that they can get here, but um, yeah, if they heard us, then uh, well, they'd have to be pretty close because they've only been transmitting since like the powerful enough since like the 30s or something, 40s or whatever. Um, and uh, yeah, once you could, yeah transmit. <laughs> And that's a natural sign of intelligence, so you'd want to check it out. Um, so I think that's, you know, yeah, we've, we've been spewing that out for 100 years now almost. And there's a, yes, there's a contest on apparently. they got four dishes here, two in Goldstone. These two, 20 D, um, DSS 24, 25, and uh, 34 and 36 here in Canberra in Australia. And uh, yes, there's a contest on to see who can actually receive it first. There's a contest between all all the uh, all the uh, operators, the the controllers, sorry, as they call. Richard calls them. Heard the audio in the background, so just watch these dishes to see who gets it first. Um, oh, time until uh, signal acquisition, minute 44. We make it to Didn't the know that planet. was a countdown. There we you go. Have a set with okay, so we're waiting Martian for signal surface. acquisition. Uh, in a few days. Who will get it first, so, Goldstone uh, or Canberra? We, My uh, money's on Canberra. Stay Great. on target. Thank you so Stay much, Adam. on and target. Right now we are just a minute away from the acquisition signal, so let's pause for a moment the and dish. watch our team. Great movie, network. The Dish. If anyone hasn't seen The Dish, you must see it. Got some great legacy hardware in it. It's fantastic. One of the best Australian comedies, The Dish. Absolutely brilliant. I so want to play cricket on The Dish. About the incomprehensible aliens thing, yeah. Probably, but uh, the distances are so vast, we'll never be able to never be able to communicate with them. There's no point even fantasizing over it. Well, you can fantasize over it, you know. It's good science fiction, but science fiction it will remain. You cannot break the laws of physics, Captain. Come on, he's going to receive it. Come on, he's going to win. Will we get any signal? Fingers crossed. Hey, Canberra got it. Canberra got it. Two dishes up. Two dishes. I saw signal. Or are they transmitting? Flight nav. Yep, they got it. They're applauding. Go ahead, nav. Uh, we're seeing one-way data. Thank you. Yep, yep. Go Canberra. Go Canberra. Receiving. Woohoo! Canberra did it. We now have an acquisition of signals. The rumbles now are of claps and cheers, and it's an amazing moment. And awesome. tears of blood, sweat, and she tears woke up. every person who worked on this mission is now Fantastic. realized. As Perseverance makes its way to Mars now. If uh, yeah, a lot of people think that, like, you know, Voyager 1 and 2 have the lowest power levels, you know, uh, the lowest reception power levels, but they don't because they actually have um, huge high-gain dishes on them. They got huge high gain dishes and you know fairly decent transmit power even though they're outside the solar system um, the reception levels from Voyager are actually higher apparently it's you know it's not that difficult to hear the Voyagers um, a, a lot of the other probes are actually lower power because of their smaller dishes um, even though they're much uh, are closer in different power levels so yeah I that's one of the things I learned when I went to and, uh, track the Voyager 2 down in Canberra. Um, um, yeah, I just assumed it would be the lowest level. You know? No, it's got a big ass, you know, three meter wide high gain dish on the thing. And Goldstone is uh, listening now too. But Canberra got it. Canberra got the win. 
Somebody owes somebody a case of beer, I'm sure. So, yep, that's it. That's it, folks. We are done and dusted. I should uh, call it quits. Successful launch on its way to Mars. We assume it's uh, heading in the right direction. And, uh, well, it must be heading in the right direction because they would have calculated where it should be and they pointed the dish there and, they and they're and they hearing it. So, 